Well, you know, look, I think that with Chauncey, it was what he did on the court and off the court. I think with Nick, it's going to be, you know, he's a young guy. It's going to be what he does on the court. And, you know, we've been looking for a traditional 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, two guard that can defend those guys on the oppositions. We've had a lot of trouble with the bigger guards. Um, I use the example upstairs. You know, tonight, I think you anticipate they're going to put Steve Nash on Randy, and then you're going to have Grant Hill guarding, uh, you know, guarding Chris Paul, and it's going to be a problem. But you, know, you try and do that with Nick Young, and you can't hide your point guard on a 6'7 guy you know, that scores like he breathes. So you know, Nick is a multi-dimensional scorer, can score in pick and rolls, isolations, off screens, catch and shoot. He's one of the best catch and shoot corner players in the league. Um, and you know, for all the talk about him as a defender, what people don't realize is in isolation situations on the ball, Nick Young's in the top 10% in the league as a defender. So, you know, so we're, look, we're excited. I mean, it, it adds depth to our bench in terms of if we move guys down in the rotation, we can go deeper into our bench, which we're going to need. I mean, we're playing six games in eight days. We're playing 10 and 14. I mean, it's just not going to end between now and the end of the season. But with that lineup, playing in a backcourt of Chris Paul, you know, and having a 6-6 wing and then having, having Karan, just so much more size. And hopefully he makes the game. He opens the floor up for DeAndre and Blake Brad because his ability to knock down shots and you have to pay attention to him as a scorer. So the defense can't just sit on the boxes and the nails and the elbow and take away all of Chris's penetration. Is that expected here tomorrow and perhaps he's playing on Saturday? The no, I don't think that's viable. I think the other part players in the trade, I think their physicals will be more extensive. Um, I think we anticipate Nick getting here sometime tomorrow afternoon. He'll do a physical Friday, Saturday. Um, all parties have until noon Sunday to report for their physicals and take their physicals. <coughs> And they have until Monday at noon to pass. So I think the earliest we're going to see Nick, unless this thing really gets accelerated, because we have an afternoon game Sunday, is going to be uh, Tuesday in uh, Indiana. Neil, you know, the moves of today, I mean, how did they change the Pacific Division? I know you're focused on your moves, but in general, what your other competitor, I guess, in the division did, do you think it changes anything? Yeah, I think guys got better. Um, I think what you saw at this trade deadline, it looked like it was going to be pretty quiet. And I think what you saw was, I think people think the field is pretty open right now. Um, I don't think there's a dominant team that anybody's afraid of that kind of has it wired. And I think what you saw was teams that are in the mix right now tried to move the needle and get better. Um, you know, Lakers got better today. They added two key pieces. And what they, and what they conveyed um, you know, in terms of picks, that's not going to help them win any games right now. Um, I think Houston got better today. You know, you had a guy like Marcus Camby. I mean, there, now you've got two premier shot blockers with him and D'Alembert, rebounders. Um, another defensive presence with playoff experience. They got better. So I, I think what you saw today was guys saying, you know, this thing's open and we're going to push some chips in and see if we can, you know, we can get a, you know, make some progress in the playoffs. Nick, so, not to throw your cards prematurely on the table, but do you see this as a perhaps a long-term relationship or just? I hope so. That's the goal. Um, look, like, whether we find our two guard now or we find him in July, we're going to have to find one. Um, we'd love for it to be Nick. Um, clearly, he gave his bird rights to be here. He wants to be here. Um, we have, right now we have, we're a mid-level team next summer, but there are some contractual options where we could also be a room player. Um, and there are some deals we can make in June as well. We've been pretty active and we've got a lot of assets. I think the key in this trade was that, you know, a week ago, any deal to acquire a player of Nick's caliber was going to involve either some of our young assets or a draft pick. And at this point, we were able to acquire a guy we had ranked, you know, in the top of our board as far as acquisition for a 2015 second round pick from the Chris Paul deal.